The classes typically required for an accounting major can be put into three groups. Required accounting courses, required non-accounting courses, and accounting electives. The required accounting courses usually include financial accounting, managerial accounting, intermediate accounting, tax, audit, and accounting information systems. Financial accounting covers fundamental accounting concepts like debits and credits and focuses on the three main financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, aka the statement of financial position, and the statement of cash flows. Intermediate accounting builds on financial accounting by introducing more advanced concepts, but you're still focused on making the financial statements for investors and creditors. Managerial accounting goes in a completely different direction. It shows you how managers use accounting information to make decisions. Here's an example of how these courses would cover a topic like inventory differently. In financial accounting and intermediate accounting, you'll learn how to account for inventory, how to record an inventory write-down, and how inventory errors affect the financial statements. In managerial accounting, on the other hand, you'd learn how to make production budgets to forecast your inventory need, how to determine the amount of inventory that needs to be sold in order to break even, and when to reorder inventory. So managerial accounting is about helping the company's managers make better decisions, while financial accounting and intermediate accounting are about producing financial statements for people outside the company, like investors and creditors. Note that some schools split intermediate accounting into two courses, whereas other schools divide it into three courses. Thus, you'll be required to take at least three to four courses in financial accounting, one course in the basic financial accounting course, and two or three courses in intermediate accounting. When it comes to managerial accounting, you might only have to take one course, although some schools require a second course called cost accounting that builds on the principles for managerial accounting. When it comes to difficulty, students usually say that tax is the most challenging required course. This is because there's a massive number of tax rules and the rules frequently change. A tax textbook from 1999 would be useless today, whereas a managerial accounting textbook from 1999 wouldn't be all that different from a textbook used today. When it comes to auditing, students don't usually find the course all that difficult, although some people think it's boring. You'll spend most of the semester talking about auditing the financial statements, so all your knowledge from financial accounting and intermediate accounting will come into play. You can't be a great auditor unless you have a strong grasp of financial accounting. Finally, accounting information systems will probably be the first course where you get a really heavy exposure to Microsoft Excel. Your instructor might also introduce you to one or more types of accounting software. Learning accounting software can be helpful, but the company that ultimately hires you when you graduate might not use the same accounting software that you learned in class. Most accountants use Excel, however, so learn as much of that as you can. Next, let's discuss the required non-accounting courses. Accounting majors typically need to take corporate finance, macro and or microeconomics, a management course, a marketing course, a math course, and a statistics course. In corporate finance, you'll learn about the time value of money. This can be really helpful when you get to intermediate accounting and have to calculate the issue price of a bond. You'll also discuss decision rules like MPV, IRR, and the payback method. These topics are sometimes covered in managerial accounting as well, so there might be some overlap there. In microeconomics, you'll talk about things like supply and demand. And in macroeconomics, you'll talk about GDP and the unemployment rate. If you're required to take a course in management, you could encounter a variety of topics, as there are many different types of management courses. In a strategy course, you'll learn about Porter's Five Forces and about doing a SWOT analysis. In an organizational behavior course, you'll learn about power and politics in organizations. In an operations management course, you'll learn about bottlenecks, lean thinking, and the bullwhip effect. If you have a choice which type of management course to take, I suggest taking organizational behavior if you're into psychology, Strategy if you like game theory or big picture thinking, and operations management if you're into supply chains and want to build your quantitative skills. Accounting majors are sometimes required to take a marketing course as well. If you are forced to take a marketing course, just remember, it's only one semester and marketing usually doesn't cause permanent damage. You'll probably be required to take a basic math class and a statistics class as well. Contrary to public opinion, accounting does not require advanced math skills, so you can relax if you don't do that well in calculus. But I encourage you to pay very close attention in your stats class. The rise of data analytics and the changing role of accountants means those stats skills could come in handy. Finally, let's discuss accounting electives. This is where things get really fun. 
Most schools offer advanced accounting, advanced tax, advanced auditing, nonprofit and governmental accounting, and financial statement analysis. Advanced accounting is more financial accounting, so you could think of it as an extension of intermediate accounting. You'll spend a lot of the course talking about how to account for business consolidations, but you'll also talk about topics like how to account for derivatives. Advanced tax is a deep dive into the tax rules for corporations and partnerships. This class can be brutal in terms of difficulty, particularly if you have a bad teacher, but you should absolutely plan to take the course if you plan to do any tax work in your career. If you plan to work as an auditor, then taking advanced auditing should be a priority. And if you think you might one day want to work in the public sector or work for an NGO, then taking nonprofit and governmental accounting could be a really valuable learning experience. The financial statements used by nonprofits and governments aren't the same as those used by for profit companies, and these topics are rarely covered in the introductory financial accounting or intermediate accounting courses. Students usually love financial statement analysis, as this is where accounting concepts come to life. You'll dive into companies' annual reports and use ratio analysis and other techniques to analyze companies' business performance. Depending on your instructor, you might learn a lot about financial statement modeling or predicting financial statement fraud. Now, some schools also offer accounting electives like accounting ethics, law for accountants, sustainable reporting, forensic accounting, and data analytics for accounting. Many schools also offer a special topics course where you discuss current issues in accounting. This class can be really fun because you're getting to discuss cutting edge topics. Now, large universities sometimes offer an accounting research course. This course would give you an overview of the academic literature in accounting, and it'd be really helpful if you're thinking about becoming an accounting professor. Some schools in the US also offer a course in IFRS, and this can be really helpful if you're planning to do work outside the United States. So which electives should you take? Well, that depends. If you plan to get a job in public accounting, then you'll need a professional certification. In that case, you should take electives that will help you pass the exam to obtain your professional certification. For students in the US, that would mean taking advanced auditing or advanced tax, nonprofit and governmental accounting, and advanced accounting. These classes would help you pass the CPA exam. But maybe accounting is your second major and you don't even plan to become an accountant. Maybe you'd like to break into investment banking or another finance role. In that case, you'd want to take financial statement analysis, advanced accounting, and data analytics for accounting. Or maybe you plan to pursue a PhD in accounting and become a professor. If that's the case, you should definitely take the accounting research elective, as well as some additional electives in statistics and economics. The key is to choose the career path that you plan to take, and then choose electives that allow you to achieve success in that career path. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to share your experience with an accounting course, make sure to comment below.